Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the solution for Integrity's December XSS challenge. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. The first thing we see is this page explaining the rules. And at the bottom we have our challenge. It says click the cracker to pull it apart, so let's just click it a bunch of times. And then we notice that it opens up and we get a nice Merry Christmas and we can enter a payload. So I'm going to enter test, I'm going to enable stay open and I'm going to submit this. And okay, we see that test ends up here um, reflected. So would it really be as simple as just submitting some HTML um, and having the HTML be rendered? Well, only one way to find out and that's to do it. So I'm going to send this h1 test h1 and let's see what happens. Uh, and sadly our result doesn't seem to be an h1. I will look into the, um, the inspector view here and then we can also see that it's not an h1. So this seemingly was filtered uh, and those tags were removed. However, whilst looking at the inspector tools here, I noticed this refer here. And it contains uh, the URL, including everything, including our, including our payload, and it's reflected on the page in a comment. Now that's a secondary reflection point, because obviously we can control that, uh, and that's very interesting. And if you've never heard what a referrer is, every browser or most browsers add to a request a header, that's the referrer header, that shows where the user comes from. This header is very useful um, for search engine optimization or, or knowing where your users are, are coming from and how they're using your website. However, obviously it's some extra thing that could be injected into because this is obviously controlled by the user, the referrer, where the user comes from. Um, so that's a secondary injection point and if we look at it, we see that our payload here contains test and nothing to do with our h1, but if I enter the payload again here and I submit this again, and I go into it right here, now we notice that our payload contains these uh, ampersand gt uh, semicolon. Now what is that, an ampersand gt semicolon? That's a, um, a way of encoding your greater than sign so that obviously XSS can be prevented. So that is happening here in this case. Why did that only happen when I submitted it a second time? Well, that's because the referrer is always showing the previous request. So earlier it was showing that first request that we just did with test, and now it's showing uh, the one we did before this. So we see a difference here. We see that our the reflected parameter that we can see on the screen is handled differently than our referrer. And that is already a great sign that something might be off about one of these. One of these might be vulnerable because they're not being handled in the same way. Something different is going on there. And it's not really clear which of these would be easier to exploit. On the one hand, uh, the test one that's visible could be easier. But in this case, uh, I would say you definitely need to check out both of them and enumerate both of them, see which of them is vulnerable. And I would start with the referrer one in this case because it's less conventional. You're not used to seeing the referrer header being um, echoed out to the screen. So in order to test this, we need to start looking at, at what's going on here. And obviously we see that these characters are being um, encoded in that safe format, in that ampersand GT semicolon format so there's no way around that. And this is where the second hint that we released on our Twitter could come in handy. So let's take a look at that hint. That hint says, the same to you is not the same to me. Now, how could we apply that to, um, to IT? The same to you is not the same to me. Something that we see is not seen as the same thing by the server. So we might, for example, see a less than or a greater than sign but the server sees something different. And this could point you towards homoglyphs. Now homoglyphs are characters that look alike, but that are not the same. And you've obviously heard of Unicode. So in Unicode, you have various different characters and a lot of characters that look exactly the same or they look very similar, but a computer obviously interprets them differently. And there's this GitHub repository here, a big list of homoglyphs. And under raw data in characters, we can see 
uh, them clearer. So I'll zoom in a bunch here, that might be a little too much. Okay, right here. And we see all of these characters, and we see all of these different A's that are obviously still an A to us, but the computer might interpret them differently. Now let's see what happens if we input these A's into our payload field here. So I'm going to submit them. And now in the result here, they show up as just normal A's. Uh, as what we input it, so that's okay. But let's see what happens if we submit that uh, again, so that the referrer updates and so that the referrer contains this payload. Now let's go and look at that. And I can see that our refer seems to contain um, almost the same as our, um, as our result here. So that's interesting. Let's try uh, a couple more of these. Uh, let's see with these three P's what's happening. Or let's try these M's. This whole long list of M. Let's see what's happening if we see any difference there. So obviously there it's different uh, or it's the same. And then if I go into the refer, what will happen? And here we see something interesting. We see that almost all of these, or at the end at least, all of these are the same. So in the beginning we still see some difference, and that's, be that's because not all of these normalize to the same character, but at the end we see that a bunch of them are actually just the same character. Now what does that mean? On the back end there is some code that is normalizing them. It is taken, that's taking a Unicode character and normalizes it to its normal ASCII value or to a kind of value. And what does that mean? That, that's something that happens a lot, that's okay, that's cool, that, that prevents a lot of issues like visual bugs where you have these kind of characters that are very long or stuff like that. But the issue comes when you normalize after you've already removed um, after you've already done your firewall, you, you've already removed illegal characters. So let's say I have code that removes a less than sign and then it normalizes. So that means that some character, like a ASCII character or a Unicode character that is not a less than sign but that normalizes to a less than sign is still present in there so you can still use that. And that is what we're going to be trying to exploit right here today. So okay, that might seem a little strange, but let's just start working with a payload and let's see if we can figure it out together. So uh, I'm just gonna write a normal payload as we would, so I can have this, then an image, then I'm gonna do a source of, and then a hashtag, because we want the source to fail, so that our on error will trigger and our on error will be an alert, document.domain. And then I can close this. So this is our payload. Obviously, if we submit this, this won't do anything, it won't work. Uh, so submit this twice, it won't work. Now, however, we can change these characters here, um, this less than sign, and we can see if we if we use a homoglyph, if that will work. If that will get normalized to the normal character after it's already gone through uh, the firewall or the place where it checks against illegal characters. So I'm going to search for this one here, a greater than sign, and I'll use uh, this one here. So this is obviously different than these other ones. What happens if we put that into our payload here? Okay, I copy that again. Let's copy and paste. And now I can enter this whole payload and hopefully we will see a difference. So submit it once and then submit it twice. And now we see a visual difference here already. And if I go and look into it, we actually see that we exited out of our comment. We exited out of it and now we're writing to the screen. So that's already super great. Um, we noticed that our image doesn't work yet because obviously we haven't changed the opening quote yet because that also got converted. So now we can just search for that and maybe we'll find one of those. So I'll do it with the opening one as well. And here we go, we have one. Let's convert this. It looks different and that's great, but might the computer see this as the same? Let's see, so I enter my payload here, I submit it, obviously now I have to submit it again so that the referrer updates, and we get our XSS. Okay, okay, we have a pop-up, that's great, however, obviously this is a self-XSS. We had to enter a malicious payload ourselves, and no user would ever do this or uh, under very limited circumstances. 
we want to kind of automate this and the best way would be that we could send a link to a victim and if the victim clicks on the link it will get this pop-up saying challenge dash 1221.integrity.io all right how can we do this we need to control the referrer in some way um what we could do is we could host our own web page so i'm going to go here i'm going to create a new file here and i'm going to host my own web page so it's going to be an html page super cool and super fancy and my html page is going to have a body now okay that's great a body and now here we can have some text um, that's being shown but that's all okay that's okay we can show that text how do we make the user then go and visit the the page um, the challenge page where the exploit actually happens well we can just make an iframe here right so we can iframe our our other page here uh, and actually the iframe doesn't need to be closed we can just do it like this and now it can contain a source and our source is then going to be on our web page uh, this one so i can copy this source and we still need a url in front of there obviously okay let's also have that in there so okay that's the source to our challenge page we can save that as test.html and now we can host it and i will just for the sake of this video quickly use um, python dash m http dot server 80 so i'll just host a server on my local host obviously in real life you would host this somewhere on the internet now i can go to that page on my local host and we see our page in a little iframe here um, and that's cool and now if we look at our referrer here in the result we see that we have um, the referrer http local host uh, that's cool however shouldn't it be a localhost slash test dot html question mark test well yeah it should be why why is that not happening um that's that's a good question and we need to figure it out if we want to solve this challenge of course and this actually has to do with the referrer policy so the, in this case not every part of the referrer is being passed on that's a security measure because sometimes your web page may contain a um a password or a username or an id or something that you want to keep secret in the url and you don't want to just pass that on to any website that you're moving the user along to however luckily there is a referrer policy and we can look at the documentation here and this referrer policy has an unsafe URL. Now that's an interesting one. And if we check that out, it says send the origin path and query string uh, regardless of security. So that's exactly what we want. And we can supply that using this meta tag here. So meta name refer and then a content. So, okay, let's go back he to here to our little web page that we're hosting. And now I want to add a head to this. That's not what I wanted. Yep, a head. And this head is going to contain our meta tag with, uh, I think it was unsafe dash URL. I can save that and I can run this again. So let's interrupt that, run it again and reload this here. Now, if I go back to see what happens in our punchline, we see that the full URL is placed in the refer uh, here so okay that's the first step now all we should need to do is take our payload and paste that in there in our url let's see if we can do that so i'm copying our payload and just putting it in here all right and we see that we don't get a pop-up um which is strange we would have expected that let's see what's going on here something strange with the source is going on maybe our hashtag isn't really oh i see what's going on the hashtag is obviously being interpreted as uh, part of the URL here where the rest would be um, an anchor. And so it would point you to an anchor uh, because this is interpreted differently. We can just supply test as source. Test will also fail. And now we get our pop-up. So we have this link that we can just send over to anybody if I send it over uh, and then it should pop up an alert in this case it doesn't because the web page is still busy here but now it popped up an alert if i run it again it pops up an alert 
And that is how you solve this challenge and how you could make a web page that um, makes a challenge pop up an alert, get some XSS on the victims in this case. Now, this was a kind of different challenge from the last ones. Um, however, I hope you learned something new. I hope you learned about homoglyphs and uh, you, will uh, in, you will start using these in your day-to-day -day hunting on integrity. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back for the next one.